officially welcome. <laughs> We're gonna do some slow flow yoga. Flow. We're gonna use that word because <laughs> the poses are gonna kind of link together, but it's gonna be a really relaxed, hippy, dippy kind of flow. Um, maybe getting outside of some boxes. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not really in a box. I'm in a big circle, but you might be in a box. <laughs> You've got a yoga mat that's a rectangle. Um, I lit this incense uh, charcoal thing. This is why I might be a little bit like, I'm, I think it's going to be all right, but it's doing some extra sparky sparky. So if for some reason, my living room suddenly catches fire. I will be abandoned you temporarily. <laughs> Just carry on with whatever we're up to. <laughs> You'll need a yoga strap for tonight's practice along with whatever yo other yoga props you might want. <laughs> oh. It's just being a little extra. I'm being a little extra. I don't know what its story is, but in any case, we're just gonna find our P's and Q's. All right, we're gonna start lying down. Whatever is going on in your life, unexpected fire, <laughs> life challenges, family, whatever you might have going on. I'm going to use this pillow under my back. Other options include rolling up a blanket and putting that down and laying down the length of that or crossways and laying across it that way. Or you could take a couple of yoga blocks. One can go under your shoulders, one under your head. The head can be higher or a little bit lower. Um, and that's really nice too. The, the blocks for me are a little firmer, a little more like present. The pillow's a little like in between, kind of medium, and the blanket is the easiest going of the shapes. All right. Now, so this sort of resembles the fish. If you're familiar with the fish pose without my head dropping back, now you can certainly achieve that if you have your props oriented in such a way that you allow the head to drop back. I'm not really interested in that. I'm gonna soften through the throat hopefully. <laughs> Providing I'm not worried about burning things down. I'm going to soften through my throat. I'm going to kind of let myself sink into the pillow a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not going to overly adjust my head backward to expose the throat. And I've got my legs outstretched a little more like a traditional fish pose. My elbows are placed on the floor a little more like a traditional fish pose, but you could put your feet together or have the feet on the ground, maybe knock the knees toward each other. See what feels right for you. this little charcoal incense so I could burn some pinion resin and some little herbs and things but uh so there's there you know I'm breathing and there's a smell <laughs> at your house it might be a little different but you might tune into a sense maybe your sense of hearing or your sense of letting go kind of getting heavy in the body um for me <laughs> the sense of smell is where I'm kind of oriented it's drawing me in close I'm gonna hang with that as I breathe, just be present for the aroma. Try to relax around it rather than, you know, send my attention really forward trying to smell all the smells. I'm just allowing the sense of aroma to come to me, see what I perceive.
take for like another four breaths or so, maybe like just shy of 30 seconds-ish. my sort of attention to my sense of smell and just broaden it out a little bit. Include the sensation of the breath in my body. I'll invite you to that. going to take this pillow out from underneath me. Oh. And for the time being, just pause on my back. Now there's this little sort of feeling where the pillow was, and it feels nice to kind of rock that upper part of my back across the floor, just massage all the areas where the pillow was pushing, uh, you know, or holding my upper back up into the air. <laughs> little windshield wiper removes with the legs feels nice. Whatever you might want to do, you might want to bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a little hug and a massage on the back that way. All right, we're going to turn this into a twist. So I'm going to take my legs over to the right. I could go to the left. It's just a choice. I'm going to take this left leg, wrap it around the right one. So I've got a little bit of a um, intertwining. And then with my upper back relatively stable on the floor, I'm going to extend my left arm out until I feel a little stretch through my chest muscle there. And then I've made a choice to turn my head the opposite direction of that arm to the right, but you can do either or keep your head oriented so your nose points straight up. Because <laughs> sometimes just playing with the position of the head is interesting to me in a twist. So I'm just noticing where does the focus come? Sometimes when I do the chest muscle stretch by really reaching out through one arm, it's all about the chest muscle. There's something really interesting and sort of sensitive about this attachment point right at the breastbone. And then I can feel where it attaches to my arm bone. <laughs> so both ends of that muscle are quite, um, spicy is a little strong word, but they're, it's zesty, how's that? <laughs> but tonight, like this, the whole focus really is on sort of my obliques. <laughs> Notice where for you, maybe it's your outer hip or your thigh that has the most sensitivity in this pose. Maybe it's all pretty even, you know, just check it out. Stay for you, like another four or five breaths. Now the leg that's on top for me right here, this is my left leg. And that's going to be the one that I'm going to work with for the next several poses. to the center and as I come around I'm just gonna draw that leg in towards me so it gets closer to my chest now you can put some support underneath this right leg I'm just gonna extend mine out and then I'm gonna do this little like rock the baby so I've got my leg in what's essentially a pigeon orientation it's externally rotated and then I'm gonna adduct it I'm gonna bring it across my torso and I'm gonna abduct it bring it out as far to the side as it'll go so that's the Rock the baby. The motion is in this hip socket. And for me, like it, the, where I feel the pose changes as it goes across and out. Just you can feel the different muscles that are being asked to join the party here. <laughs> I'm gonna do that twice more. 
So I'm gonna reach and grab the sole of my foot with my left hand and it's sort of in a lunge position. So the knee is bent, my foot is flat, as if I were lunging up on the ceiling. Now, for me, because I do not have a great deal of extension at my hip, the shape of my bones and the tension from my hip flexor cause my hip to always feel like it's slightly flexed. Same thing as with my elbow. My elbow always feels slightly bent. It's mostly the shape of my joints. So as I stretch out through this leg and try to flatten <laughs> the front part of my hip, I feel a stretch there. If that's not true for you, you can pull this thigh down on the left towards the floor, whatever side you're on, lifting this opposite hip. And then as you extend that leg out, you'll have more room for an extension through that hip. I almost do not need that. Just <laughs> trying to flatten the front of my hip is enough to make that extension happen. We're all shaped a little differently, so choose appropriately for you. One more big breath. All right, now I'm going to attach a strap to this foot while I'm here because the next couple of poses for me, it's going to be best if there's a strap involved. So I'm just going to put that right around the ball of my foot. I'm going to roll into my right side. I'm going to use my right arm as a pillow and then bringing this foot around behind. Now you may just want to hold onto the foot with your hand, but I'm going to hold onto the foot over my head using the strap. So I'm doing a side lying dancer. So now I've got the top of my left thigh. Whoa, sometimes that makes my hamstrings cramp up. Uh, <laughs> hang on. You don't have to help that hard. <laughs> my hamstrings are like, I want to join in. I want to help support my friends, the quads. It's not that hard, friend, not that hard. I'm kind of walking my hands down so I get a little um, extension through my armpit. <laughs> a little elevation in my shoulder blade. Oh, that feels so nice. Oh, <laughs> it's intense, but nice. <laughs> we'll stay for like another three or four breaths. Now I'm going to extend my leg all the way straight, come back onto my back and then turn that into the hamstring stretch. So we'll just top of the thigh, back of the thigh. And if I put the strap behind my back, I can hold onto it in a lighter way, <laughs> which I appreciate after holding it over my head for a while. Now, one thing that's kind of fun to me with this, with any of the poses that involve a strap, um, one is we get to let the rest of the body really relax. Now you can be more active there. You can reach out through this leg. You're, we're not currently <laughs> tugging on or holding on to. Turn the toes up, kind of orient that leg, or you can let that leg be really relaxed. There's a, a choice involved. And then there's little teeny tiny play that you can do. You can rotate externally or internally. You can supinate or pronate your foot. You can point or flex at the ankle joint. And that changes the sensation. If I pronate and my big toe goes higher than my little toe, the sensation in my calf muscles changes compared to the opposite, supinating where my little toe moves toward the ceiling, my big toe moves away. There's a little different sensation as I do that. For me, spicier if I supinate than if I pronate. So it might be opposite for you. We'll stay for another four to five breaths. Now the next move is going to take the leg out to the side, so we'll kind of go after these inner thigh muscles. So I have this furniture here, so I'm going to just reorient my whole torso if you don't have enough room to go out to the side, you can roll back onto your side and have the leg go straight up. You'll just, it'll just reorient you similarly 
to the way we did the dancer. I'm just gonna do that and then I should be able to nestle myself in amongst the tropical plants. <laughs> now I'm gonna add a little support under this hip. So I still feel that inner thigh stretch, but now it's not trying to pull my whole skeleton over to quite the same degree. I've got a little, a little mm, kickstand. <laughs> Say so a booster seat was the only word that was coming to my mind, but that wasn't the right word. <laughs> it's more like a, yeah, like a kickstand or a block. Oh, that'll hold it. So for me, like with this particular shape, internal and external rotation, even just a mild amount of that really changes the landscape of the stretch. I want it to be a little little softer. I internally rotate a little bit, a little spicier externally rotate. And then we'll do like another four or five breaths. strap off my leg. So we did the outer hip with the twist and the rock the baby kind of movements that we did. We got to our, the top of our thigh with that little dancer variation. We did the hamstrings and the inner thighs. So hopefully we've got a nice sort of balanced um, feeling across that leg that we just did. Just notice, <laughs> notice how that went for you. Does it feel different on that side. Sometimes for me it really focuses just on the hip and the leg, but sometimes I can feel that difference all the way up the whole chain, all the way through my whole body because the, you know everything is connected. So my rib cage might feel a little different, the side of my waist might feel a little different, my lower back. There's always this kind of almost like you know when you shake a garden hose, kind of get all the kinks out of the garden hose so it kind of smooth or like a sheet or something, you kind of shake it, get all the wrinkles out. That's almost the way it feels, like these poses kind of shake out the wrinkles. <laughs> so everything feels longer, a little smoother. Oh, it's, not, I, it's a very pleasant. <laughs> Hopefully it's very pleasant for you because it's very pleasant for me. All right, so we're gonna go do that whole sequence again if I can remember it. <laughs> we'll do that whole flow again on this side. So I'm starting with the twist. So I've got my right leg now looped over in that little eagly kind of twist. I'm going to consciously adjust my upper back so there's as much as I can an even amount of pressure on both shoulder blades. I'm going to play with the angle here. Usually for my right side it is not that hard for me to feel a pec stretch. This side's always a little tighter. Oh. There are two pectoralis muscles. So pec minor lives under here and connects the rib cage to the shoulder blade, kind of through the armpit. It makes part of the back of our armpit, if you will. And then the pec major attaches the rib cage breastbone to the arm bone, to this humerus. So that is a different sensation of stretch. Pec minor is a shoulder stabilizer. It stabilizes the shoulder from the front because it attaches to that shoulder blade, kind of holds the shoulder blade from the front side. And then it's a secondary breathing muscle. It helps lift these upper couple of ribs, like four, five, six. Um, it helps lift those ribs up, out, up and out a little bit if we want to take a really deep breath. So it's not involved in the kind of mo more natural or um, natural is not the right word, but you know, that kind of, well, maybe the, <laughs> the sort of automatic rhythm of the breath. It's def probably doesn't involve itself too much in that, but if you really try to expand your rib cage and really fill up, you might feel that little extra bit of lift it gives to the ribs right there. That's kind of fun. And 
And that muscle for me is, you know, it's, it's not an mu easy muscle to stretch. So it's not the one that I'm feeling here, but it's nice. The muscle that is stretching feels nice. But I'm always surprised at how, um, how much of my attention is sort of directed into that relative, I mean, compared to these big muscles in my hip, relatively small <laughs> muscle area. So we'll stay for another four or five breaths, somewhere in that neighborhood, around 30 seconds-ish. So I'm gonna gently extract myself from this twist. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna grab hold of this right leg. Give that little, this is the little rock the baby move. So I've got it in this kind of externally rotated pigeon shape. And then I'm gonna bring it inside and outside, however much that seems appropriate. We'll see which arm is the better one to hold it with. Again, this for me, the sensation changes. It's there's a lot of it is directed into this outer hip. But as I come over here, it's a little higher up as opposed to over here where the stretch feels like it's kind of a little lower down, moves around towards the back of my thigh. Just notice for yourself sort of that range of motion, range of stretch, range of sensation. There's a lot of muscles in that area five external hip rotators, three glutes, <laughs> three hamstrings, some quads, some internal rotators, all kinds of things going down in that outer hip. And a lot of things attach right there at that greater trochanter on the femur, which can be super sensitive. All right, we're gonna go for this lungy shape. Now on this side for me, like the, my left hip extends a little bit more than my right hip. So it's a little bit um, smoother here. So I go ahead and lift my left hip off the ground. So I have that little bit of extra space to extend through my left leg. So my right leg's in this lunging shape. And as I pull myself into the sort of re reclining lunge, upside down lunge. <laughs> The extension is hitting me right there at the front of that left hip. But there's a lot happening in my outer right hip, so hopefully you're having fun too. <laughs> All right, one more breath. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and find my strap again, put it around my foot. This is where we're gonna roll ourselves into our dancer, side dancer. <laughs> So I'm going to roll onto my left side. And again, I'm using the strap because I want to hold my foot from overhead rather than reach back and hold the foot this way. So if you want to hold the foot that way, you may not need the strap yet. You may not need the strap in general. Maybe you can reach your foot from over your head. <laughs> Ooh. Trying to find a balance here. This side feels like it wants to tug me over more than the other side did. Another four or five breaths. Gonna 
onto my back and turn that into a hamstring stretch. <laughs> oh gosh, that felt so nice. A little tight there, friend, a little tight. <laughs> fan of these hamstring stretches. <laughs> it's like stretching with the strap. Oh, it feels good. That kind of, like one of the things that's sort of fun, I don't usually stretch my quads first. That for me is always the more sensitive of the two hamstrings to quads. I usually save the quads for last, but it's interesting to put them first. Notice if for you, you have a preference in the like order of things, right? <laughs> if you found that order challenging, notice that. All right, stay for another four or five breaths. my leg out to the side so get, get now I'm kind of going after that little inner thigh area balancing everything out here this area is so interesting to me so one of the reasons like the inner portion of this whole inner line of the thigh bone has a little ridge on it. There are so many muscles that attach um, on this inner part of the thigh. It's one of the, I call it a super highway of attachments. Like the greater trochanter, there's a bunch of muscles that attach there. This inner portion of the thigh bone, there's a ton of muscle attachment here. So lots of tendon, right, in this area. And anywhere there's tendons, for me anyway, there tends to be an increase in sensitivity when I start doing a pose. So playing with the, the, in the sensitivity and then also just consider, like your thigh bone is probably, I don't know, an inch or two in diameter at most. And then think about this diameter of, this, of your thigh, like how, how much territory lives, especially in this inner thigh area, because the, femur bone tends to kind of be, you know, because of the way the hip socket sits like a little closer to the outside of the thigh than the inside. There's a lot of soft tissue in this inner part of our thigh. It's so sensitive and so sweet. Let's do three more breaths. <laughs> Might have been four, but <laughs> we'll come on back. Uh, take the strap off. Oh. And then I'm just going to set my strap off to the side for now. I'm just going to set everything off to the side for now. Oh. And just take a moment ooh, to, again, sort of move in a sort of rhythmic, smooth way, stretch out, check out what I just did. Feels nice to me to move the ankle joints and to move the little toes and to try to get a little sort of rhythmic flow through the metatarsals. These are like the little metacarpals that live right here in the palm of the hand and then their corresponding friends, the metatarsals. It's not easy to move those bones, but you can do it. You can kind of shape the, you know, the arches in the palm and the arches in the feet. You can kind of play with them to kind of create a little bit of movement in that area of the foot. It's probably mostly phalange, <laughs> phalangeal. <laughs> oh, that's an awesome word. <laughs> but you know, a little bit of movement in those kind of central parts, the par parts that support the arches. It's kind of fun too. 
All right, so then we just check it out. Now we, for the most part, feeling relatively even, at least in terms of how the stretching or the releasing or the whatever, whatever the right term is for what we just did to our two legs. Are they more even than they were when we got halfway through? Now we're gonna flip ourselves upside down or right side up as you may, I don't know, whichever way you think it is. <laughs> we're gonna roll onto the belly. <laughs> And we're prone instead of supine. And then I'm going to put my palms way up here, way up here by my eyeballs. So my forearms rest on the floor or, or pretty close, just shy of that. If I put them so that my forearms rest, it's hard for me to move my shoulder blades. So I need just a little less than that. And I'm just sort of moving my shoulder blades up and down, around, in and out. liquefying the upper back oh. and then lifting into a cobra I'm gonna liquefy that Move the shoulders oh. and bringing myself back down I'm gonna pull my hands back a little bit maybe an inch or so and do that again liquefied upper back Imagining that sort of little inner flute, <laughs> oh, inner flute player, so my cobra swings around a little bit. <laughs> it's probably a cartoon or something, but anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna pull my hands back one more time. Do it one more time. hand placement gives me a slightly different range of motion. And then wherever I can lift myself, I'm going to put my elbows in to support me right there. Reaching out through the legs a little bit more, kind of letting my hip flexors open as wide as they're willing. <laughs> and then I've got my elbows slightly closer together than my shoulders and slightly further ahead so that my shoulder blades are in a nice, um, fairly neutral spot. No pressure in the neck. I'm not overly jacking myself back. We all have a different range of motion in terms of our spine extension, right? Hip extension. We always, you know, there's, a, there's a range. So I went to where, like my, my spine, that's as far as it's gonna go, right? It's as far as it'll extend backwards. So my abdomen might not feel like it's stretching that much. If the muscle is tight, it feels like it feels like stretching. For me, it just feels like there's like we just hit a wall. There's nowhere else I can lift. So if there's still room, come on out. When you do your sphinx or your seal or whatever version of that you want to do, um, if there's still room, like you feel like the muscle is super tight and that's why you have to stop, then there's room to play with it, right? You can keep doing like cobras and upward dogs and other po bridges and other poses to kind of loosen up your belly so that they're in hip flexor. So there's more room to extend. But if you just feel like your bones run into each other, like it just stops, there's no stretch sensation that you can relate to. Um, you have hit wherever your bones are willing to go. <laughs> and no amount of goofing off is going to change that arrangement. And if you are persistent at being pushy about it, you might in fact damage your vertebrae or the more, more likely the discs that live between them. So use your own best judgment <laughs> on like what's the right amount of backbending for any given pose. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we can go with whatever our particular anatomy is willing to allow for. All right, 
right, I'm gonna sink into a child's pose. If you don't love child's pose, you're welcome to do some cat cows, some downward dog. tuck my toes under, give my feet a little stretch as I kind of sink back towards that child's pose. Hmm. Now for me that is a stretch, just <laughs> especially if I come up a little bit and lean back into it. But if it's not enough for you, you could sit on your heels instead of um, you know, having half your body weight leaning forward onto your elbows. You can just sit right up and sit down. Just trying to you know, keep tucking them under a little bit more as they let go. <laughs> Again, there's a point where the bones are just, that's as far as my toes are going to curl under. Um, or up or whatever. <laughs> In this orientation, under. <laughs> All right, I'm going to lean forward. But there is like a little, for me, there's a little resistance in the sole, the connective tissue of the sole of my foot. So it feels nice. Feels like a little release to do that little stretch. All right. Now, I'm gonna come to um, a lunge to begin with, but this, I'm gonna get up off my knee in a moment. So I'm going to start it down low and then I'm going to bring it up a little higher and I'm going to work in two angles. So I'm going to keep for the most part my front leg kind of orienting in this direction and then this back leg I'm going to turn just a little bit more so it's like a warrior one rather than a lunge if that makes any sense. So I'm going to work with this sort of bowing warrior shape. couple back and forths with the knee on the floor and this can be kind of interesting on this inner corner of the knee so if you don't love it you can go back to the lunge all right so now I'm gonna get my toes tucked under my foot up and I'm gonna find that warrior one shape with my legs and then this bowing warrior to straight leg to bowing warrior I'm gonna go backwards to do the other side. So we'll wind up with the lunge as the last thing. So now I'm gonna hang with this bowing warrior. If you wanted to, you could wrap your arms behind your back and lace them together. I'm gonna do this little blocks up, arms overhead, drop through. I'm lifting firmly up through my inner thighs to kind of support myself here. I've got this leg really well grounded. Keep my <laughs> inner thighs and groins happy. <laughs> now I'm going to gently kind of just turn myself around until I can do a wide angle forward bend. And I'm trying to see. <laughs> If I can, as close as possible, even out the weight on my feet. Give me a little bit of stickiness under each foot. <laughs> Feels like I'm on a nice rink. <laughs> you can keep the legs straight. I'm just kind of bending one knee and then the other, kind of floating a little bit through the center here. And then straightening for a bit. Taking two, three more breaths like this, but who knows? <laughs> I can change my mind. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come up and then I'm going to reorient my feet around so I can come back to that bowing warrior, but on the other side. Again, you could Lace your fingers together. I'm picking myself up through my inner thigh. 
I'm letting my torso be really liquidy, but my legs are super strong. Straighten out my front leg and bend it. <laughs> Straighten it out and bend it. Oh, so I come to that sort of mobile version of this. And then, oh, I'm gonna bring this back leg down. And again, I'm gonna kind of try to keep this warrior one orientation with my hip. And if you don't love that, you can do a lunge orientation where the hip is more forward. And then I'm going to come back to my child's pose. You might try downward dog if that was your choice, or your cats, whatever was your choice. This is what it feels like coming home. <laughs> We're coming back to the start. <laughs> this little cyclic pattern we just did. to a seated position, eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna start with a little like, ah, and <laughs> just a little movement, a little check-in. I decide how ambitious I want to be. So there's a couple options. I'm feeling a uh, cross-legged position. <laughs> it's gonna be my best option. But you can have one knee up, you can have the other leg out straight with one knee up, you can have that knee across. However, yeah, we're gonna do a twist. So however you think it's best. <laughs> now my more um, common way of sitting cross-legged is with my left leg in front. So I'm gonna start with that and twist around to my left. You can start with your challenging side if you want, if you've got one. And then I just check to make sure I'm not leaning out of one sit bone. Like, do I have both my sit bones weighted? Now, if you do the legs a little more wrapped around each other, especially the more extreme versions of that, you may find <laughs> that you have to have one hip off the ground in order to achieve the bind. So then the question just becomes, what's the more important part? And I can't answer that for you. You're gonna have to figure that out on your own. I'm going to add this little kind of nudge um, towards a different pose. So there is a version of a twist where um, you look back over the front shoulder. Um, Bhuvaneshvarasana. Uh, I might be getting the wrong um, assembly of um, uh, vowels and consonants there, but the, it's named after a goddess who is, um, she's kind of in charge of letting go, like shedding your old skin, letting go of the stuff that is no longer appropriate, whatever that means, like no longer like working for you. And forging a little bit of head with sort of like when you, you know, like, I don't know if you are familiar with reptiles, but when reptiles are in the process of shedding their skin before it's actually come off, they tend to get a little irritable. <laughs> They're bitier. <laughs> I mean, they just, uh, it probably feels super itchy, you know, like who knows what it feels like, but um, <laughs> So it's like that, the goddess kind of rules that stage where we might be in the kind of itchy stage because the, our, you know, whatever it was that we made choices are feeling a little uncomfortable and a little um, tight, a little binding. Um, but we're also gonna let the bind go 
and there's a sense of like release and relief and there might be like an emotional release to that you know kind of stage in life but ultimately we feel better when it's done so she's kind of rules that part of the quantum field <laughs> Now, I'm going to take this left leg, bring it up on top of the right one, and create this little stacked up double pigeon shape. You can do knees over top of each other if that feels better in your hips, or you could turn this into a pigeon if you'd prefer. I'm going to let myself lean forward just until I feel it. Right there feels nice. Anyway, my suspicion is that that pose is named after that particular goddess because we're turning in two directions at once, right? I forgot to finish the story. <laughs> we're looking back, but we're also looking forward. Or we're looking forward, but part of us remains still stuck a little bit. So we're in that process. This is my suspicion. Do two more breaths. Come out of there. Ooh, I'll take my legs back out all the way and give them a little ah, release. Now I'm just going to sit cross legged the opposite way. <laughs> my twist. And of course, whatever way your legs <laughs> allowed for, and maybe you add that little quality of the goddess of the in-between spaces. <laughs> the spaces between being here and letting go. Letting go and going forward. from the tarot that comes up for me is like the hanged man where like we're sort of prepared but we're still a little bit inhibited <laughs> not everything is falling into place just yet and do about three more breaths off that skin. Sometimes I wonder if our whole society is currently in like the just before we're shedding a skin process. <laughs> Sometimes like, if you pay attention to the internet at all, everybody seems grouchy. <laughs> I'm not sure if I recommend paying attention to the internet or the news. It all is, it's always grouchy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're shedding the skin. Stay for maybe you know, another four or five breaths, somewhere in that 30 second range. Here. 
this, the legs. Oh. Now you have to decide what you want your final relaxation shape to be. Do you want your final relaxation shape to be um, a recline, you know, reclining pose, like coming back to Shavasana? We did a bunch of that. You could do a, got a seated meditation, which is what I'm gonna do, or you could do like a, an inversion, legs up the wall, or a snail, or a um, legs over the chair. Those are nice. <laughs> so if I sit up on the edge of a blanket, even though it's comfortable for me to sit cross-legged, it is more comfortable. And it feels like my knees kind of drop down in front of me and it's really steady. And there's a couple of different possibilities for the hands. So the mudra of calm abiding, where one palm, the palms are down, one on each leg one, or knee. And then there are a couple of others. We can put the palms up. We could even touch the index finger and the thumb together. You can do this whether you're lying down or seated. There's some um, lying down versions where you can put like one palm over your heart and one over the navel. one palm inside the other with the thumbs not touching or with the thumbs touching. Both of them are nice. If you like those, you could try that. I'm going to go for the mudra of calm abiding tonight. And then we'll sort of take a seat back. So whatever you're doing, we're going to bring any attention that still sort of resides up here in the frontal lobe all the way back into the back of the brain, just sitting into our intuitive center. Brain stem, amygdala. <laughs> the emerge, place of emergence for all of the cranial nerves, those that both control the sympathetic response, the kind of take action response, and then the parasympathetic, the resting response. And kind of feels a little bit like easing the seat back in the car, kind of sitting back into a reclining chair, like ooh. Let the tongue and the kind of soft upper palate and the back of the throat, like let that whole area soften such that it feels like there's a kind of broadening of our ability to communicate without words. This sort of middle cauldron, this middle area, this kind of center dantian between the heart, the navel. And can we relax the abdominal muscles, let the heart lean back into the nest of the ribs. Relax any tightness around the navel itself. Usually I feel the kind of grippy tension of stress just above the navel, solar plexus region. And you can imagine like all of the little internal organs that live in that place, just ah, leaning into each other like friends. Like they're having a little pajama party. And we come to the lower cauldron, this kind of lower Dantian sea of energy, this bowl of the pelvis and can we let the sit bones really soften, the legs relax, any tension that drifts through the hip flexors, the groins, all the way down to the toes. Let the muscles in the bowl of the pelvis just kind of lean into the back of the pelvis. Let the 
sacrum soften a little bit into the into the pelvic you know like it leans on the pelvis on two sides kind of just ah oh, like it's just being caught by the tree limbs of the pelvis so you can just let go into the swing of that moment to notice your breath again. And feel the breath move through these three energy centers, the upper sea of energy, the upper cauldron, right between the kind of eyes where the tips of the, you know, the tops of the nostrils. So the breath start there, kind of touches into that third eye, then it fills up the ribs, then it fills up the belly. And then we release it, belly, ribs oh, right out through that third eye center out through the nostrils And if you're lying down or you're doing a inversion, you can bring yourself to a seat. If you're already in a seat, give yourself a little jiggle. <laughs> Just like a nice big breath. And then, <laughs> namaste, yogis. <laughs> <laughs> 